the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, a bright, funny, touching TV series created and written by an enormous talent, Amy Sherman Palladino, whose first huge hit is Gilmore Girls. Now, if you haven't seen The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, there's a very strong Jewish element to Amy's series on Amazon. The plot centers on a young Jewish wife and mother, Midge, played by a superb young actress you may have seen in House of Cards, where she was nominated for an Emmy, and in the series Manhattan. Rachel Brosnahan, I simply adore her, I'm in love. In The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Midge stumbles into stand-up comedy when her marriage to husband Joel Maisel, played wonderfully by Michael Zegan, begins to unravel. With the help of Susie Meyerson, her bohemian friend and manager, played brilliantly by Alex Borstein, Midge begins to find herself in 1960s New York City. The dynamics of her Upper West Side Jewish family is also portrayed beautifully by Tony Shalhoub as her father Abe and Maren Hinkle as her mother Rose. And the entire supporting cast is just out of this world. I had the opportunity to sit with four members of the cast to talk about their own backgrounds and their work in this series. I hope you enjoy meeting Michael Zegan, Maren Hinkle, Alex Borstein and Rachel Brosnahan, stars of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. So you're playing Midge's husband. Right. And I've described you as having some kind of executive job in a fancy high-rise building, but you've always dreamed of being a stand-up comic. You seem happily married to Midge with a beautiful West Side apartment, two children, an adoring wife, and then one night, things don't go well for you, for Joel, on stage, during an act, and you suddenly announce that night you're leaving Midge for your secretary, Penny. And that sets up a lot of the action that then follows. Mm -hmm. So you've been, in, you played Bugsy Siegel in Board Board Empire. You were in Rescue Me. Mm -hmm. You also played Liam off-Broadway yeah. in Bad Jews. Boy, let's start there. What was that like? And the reason I ask is the following. Did you see Bad Jews? Y yes, I did. Okay. Cool. But I don't want to comment on it. Oh, you didn't like it? No. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but let me just say this to you. And you should know this as a context. I've never done a TV series. But I've been fortunate enough to be on, in Broadway productions a lot. Okay. So I produce Broadway all the time. And I'm around actors all the time. I have enormous regard. But I understand how it works, okay? And so when I say to you, what was it like? I'm not asking, you know, like a, um, somebody in the audience, what, did it, what was it like to play whatever, whatever role, Bugsy mm -hmm. Siegel or whatever, yeah. or a Joel? What I'm really asking was, what was the preparation for Bad Jews like for you? You're a Jewish kid. We'll find out more about that in a moment. Now you're in Bad Jews. How did you feel about the production, and what was that like for you? Well, when I read the play, um, when I read the script for Bad Jews, yes. I, I, I mean, I just knew that guy. I knew Liam. That I wouldn't say he's me, per se, but I identified with a lot of the things he was saying. Give me one example. Um, well, it's just about how... You know, I, I guess the the character of Daphna, his cousin, who he's constantly at odds with, was kind of my mom. You know, it's, it was it kind of was. You know, she's a, a little more religious than I am, and mm -hmm. uh, constantly trying to uh, instill these uh, these Jewish beliefs and values in me, mm -hmm. which um, which I understand. You know, we we come from uh, a family of my grandparents were Holocaust survivors, yes. so it's important to pass down these traditions. But at the same time, you know, it's like y you want to be able to live your own life. I don't want to have to go to synagogue every week or, you know, and, and, and kind of when I was a kid, that, that kind of, I didn't really have a choice. Yes. Um, Where did you grow up? In New Jersey. Uh, Where? Ridgewood, New Jersey. Ridgewood, New Jersey. What kind of Jewish home did you have? 
we, we had a, uh, we were conservative. Um, I went to, you know, uh, Hebrew school every week. I went, uh, Did went, you hate it? I, I wouldn't say I liked it. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I you haven't know, met anybody yet who likes it. I don't know it. if anybody wants to go to, uh, you know, double the school. Right. I, you know, it was twice a week. It right. was, I think, you know, Tuesday after school. Tuesday and, then, and Thursday, whatever it was. Yeah, no, it was Sunday. Sunday. It was Sunday. Sunday. Right. Like, who wants to go to school on <laughs> Sunday? Um, and so, yeah, it was, it, it wasn't my favorite thing in the world, okay. I, you know, but I, I did want to have a bar mitzvah, so it was important to, to learn. What was um, that like, by the way? My bar mitzvah? Yeah. I, you know, it's funny because uh, kind of um, <laughs> comparing my personal experiences with Joel, yes. I, uh, I, had a, I had a pretty, I had a panic attack at my bar mitzvah. Did you? Yeah. I did, and, and, and yet I was always the kid who was the actor, especially in my family, you know, and, and everybody knew I liked to act. Everybody in the town knew I liked to act. And then to get on, on the, the Bima, and, and literally it was like I, I was Joel in that scene where he bombs. It was, I, was, I was having a panic attack. Everything started spinning. I couldn't talk. Like, I couldn't talk, and I, I don't know what came over me. Um, but yeah, so it wasn't the greatest experience of my life. In fact, uh, I had a Hebrew school teacher who saw me last uh, uh, Rosh Hashanah, and she said, she came up to me, and she's, she's much older, and she came up to me, and she was like, I remember when you had your bar mitzvah, and you started crying, and I was like, great, well, <laughs> thanks for bringing that up. Um, but yeah. So when you think of it, it's not warm memories for you. Well, I mean, you know, not necessarily, okay. but but it was warm in that you know everybody was there, all my friends and family, and it it turned out okay. It was just there was a, a period of time where I had to leave and go to the bathroom and and cry and cry and cry, and then I came back up and I finished and it was okay. Okay, Michael, in retrospect, as you look back, what do you think was going on? Um, because you were, I think you you were on stage. As a I know kid your whole life. I right? know, but you know, there's a difference between playing a character and, and being yourself. Absolutely right. And I don't think I'm ever totally comfortable with being myself, mm -hmm. and, and especially in front of a large audience. I, I'm, I'm not necessarily the best at um, giving speeches. You know, I, I also, uh, I remember at my brother's wedding, I, I gave a speech and I was holding paper and shaking and you know and and then people were like you were nervous why are you nervous you're not supposed to be nervous but that's just me and and that's why I think that's why I'm drawn to acting because I get to be somebody else and it's it's very freeing um, yeah that is so honest and so real do you think you drew on the bar mitzvah experience when you did the scene uh, where you bomb you get lost on stage. Mm -hmm. And there's a question, you know, in essence, Midge has fed you with some idea, it doesn't work, and you know you're bombing yeah. as the character. And you do that superbly, by the way. You, you are superb. Oh, Everything thanks. I've seen you in. Thank you. You are superb. Do you think you drew on the Barman Spot experience? Do you remember if you did for that moment? 100%. And, and not, uh, it wasn't on purpose either. I, 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 I remember. I thought it was going to be cake. I thought I was, you know, just 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 kind of go up there and and suck, you know. And uh, I was I was doing it, and uh, Amy Sherman Palladino, the director and writer, she came up to me afterwards and um, after the first couple of takes, and and she told me um, that I'm pushing, I'm I'm pushing too much, I, and, and you never want to hear that because that sounds like you're acting. You don't want to act. Exactly. You, you know, you want to be real and. And, uh, and genuine and, um, and honest. And so that really kind of got into my head and I was, I was starting to get nervous. You know, it's, it's, it's my, the first episode and I wanna be good. I wanna, I wanna show her that I'm good, that she made the right decision. And, um, and so I, I get back up there and this is all going on in my head. And, and literally, I mean, I was back in, in my 13 year old body and once again, everything started spinning, and I, I could barely talk, and uh, it worked. And it worked. Yeah. yeah. You were superb. Thanks. Talk to me for one minute about your grandparents, because they're, your, uh, your grandmother comes from Hungary? She's from the Ukraine. From the Ukraine. Um, Holocaust survivors, both of your grandparents? Not both sets, but uh, my mom's parents were, okay. yeah. Um, 
as you look at your, do you mind my asking how old you are now? I'm 38. Okay. Um, you've lived long enough to have a sense of who your parents are as opposed to somebody who's, a, who's 20 or even 25. Yeah. We don't know our parents yet. Do you think the fact that your mother is the daughter of survivors affected your mother? Yeah, absolutely, I, I, I think. Okay, and your second generation now, third generation, mm -hmm. did it affect you? Yeah. How? Well, because you're brought up to uh, kind of, you know, recognize uh, the warning signals, you know, and, and especially right now, it's, it's a tough time, and, you know, things that you never thought would ever happen again are, um, which is, is scary. I hope that we've learned enough that this time around, you know, we're going to fight back if, mm -hmm. if need be. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we don't, you yes. know. But um, I think that's what it is. I think it's, it's uh, learning about how these things can progress and can happen and making sure that they never happen again. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I do think it affected uh, my mother, especially because, she, uh, you know, growing up, we learn about the, tr the, the traditions, and, and you know, that's why I was sent to Hebrew Did your school. grandparents, did you know your grandparents? Yeah. Did your grandmother talk about this? Did your grandfather talk yeah, about I this? Yeah, I grew up, you know, hearing all the stories. Um, you know, my grandmother was lucky in that she and her immediate family were able to escape. They, they got out um, before, you know, the Nazis came through. And my grandfather, on the, on the other hand, he got out and he was only like 16 years old. Um, somehow his father got him out of the town that they were in, in Poland. Um, just him though, he paid somebody off and got him out, but the rest of them, you know, were sent to the camps. And mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so it was important to know these things. And, and he, he never really talked about it much. Uh, I wish, he, he, you know, he's passed, uh, uh, when I was in high school, he, he, he passed away. But my grandmother's still alive, and uh, and you know I still talk to her about it, and um, I think it was important for for my mother to to pass on these stories, and for them to pass on these stories, just just to know that uh, these things could happen again, and to make sure that they don't. Mm -hmm. You're a lovely guy. <laughs> Thanks. I've enjoyed meeting you. Oh, thank you. Uh, at some point, maybe we will have a longer time to talk. But I wish you all the best. Oh, you, thanks. You are, you are a real actor. <laughs> oh, thank you. And it's an honor to meet you. I wish yes, you absolutely. all the best as you go forward oh, thanks. with the wonderful, mar marvelous, fabulous <laughs> this Mrs. Maisel. Yes. And we'll meet sometime. All thank right. you very thank much, you. Michael. Thank you. Thanks. You're playing Rose Maisel, mm -hmm. a strong Jewish mm -hmm. Park Avenue type, even though you're supposed to be on the west side. That's right. You're married to a husband played by Tony Shaloub. Mm -hmm. And you're a veteran television, film, and stage actor. Looks to me like you've been in about 30 films. You've appeared on stage in many kinds of productions, including Shakespeare. Many of the people watching will know you from Two and a Half Men. Mm -hmm. You were in Another World. Mm -hmm. You've done episodes in all kinds of series, Law and Order, Spin City, House, ER. And I just think you're wonderful. Thank you. I feel and, lucky. Okay. You know, my experience is that every actor comes to a role, and you're an actor. Mm -hmm. The average person watching television, and it happens to me also, mm -hmm. maybe it happens to you too, mm -hmm. except you're in the trade, so you, it may happen to you less. The audience looks at an actor mm -hmm. and imagines, if the actor's good, mm -hmm. that the actor is mm -hmm. that person. Mm -hmm. The actor's job is to create a character and whether you're playing in another world, or you're playing in House, or you're playing in Two and a Half Men, or you're playing in the marvelous Mrs. Mizell, you are creating a character. It doesn't mean it is who you are mm -hmm. off camera. And yet my experience is that most actors draw on something that help them define the portrayal they're trying to portray on screen, on stage, whatever. You're not Jewish, mm -hmm. yet you're playing mm -hmm. a strong Jewish mother. Mm -hmm. I want to know first, mm -hmm. what did you draw on mm -hmm. to create that character for yourself? Right, it's a beautiful question. Um, you know, I have a, 
a, a deep appreciation for strong women. I don't think I am one, actually. Honestly, I, I was raised by one. Um, oh, wait. Yeah. So digress for one yes. moment. Yes. Your parents are remarkable. Uh, Talk for one moment. Your mother was a Superior Court Justice. Yes, right. And my dad was a dean. Okay. Right. It, it, and she did this a generation before you. You're right. You're right. This wasn't common. You're right. That women were Superior Court Justices. Right, right. Is it in the state of Illinois? No, she's actually, that's um, funny, my brother lives there, but he's, uh, we're on Boston. Boston. So that's where she is. She's a Boston okay. judge. Okay. Yeah. And your father was a teacher yeah, and a, a teacher, dean. Yeah, and they met in the Peace Corps, so they both were really, before their time, educators. What, okay, that's my yeah, point. that's interesting, you, too. Right? But you grew up in an unusual household. Yeah, I don't know if right. you appreciated it oh, as I a did. child. I did appreciate it. And I think that, you know, I, I love your question because I think I've been drawn in my, my pursuit of characters to women that have more strength than I do, because to be honest, being an actor is a insecurity provoking, as you just attested to. It's a profession where there's a lot of rejection, there's a lot of criticism, there's a lot of deciphering what you look like, uh, what you're acting like. Um, so I also was lucky enough in my early uh, childhood and until I was an adolescent, I was a ballet dancer. And so it's funny when you ask what I originally was drawn to in this role, there was a description of character was she enters as if in an MGM musical. And there was a part of me immediately when I read that, I think I thought, I get to be a little larger than life. I get to have an extraordinary level of confidence and uh, certitude, self-assurance, and I'm really excited by what it would mean to be kind of powerful in her own world. And I think she has really worked hard to, to lead a proper uh, Upper West Side Jewish woman's life and to go to the right places and to shop at the right places for her clothing and to shop at the right places for her food and to bring the family together for the holidays and to do it the absolute appropriate ways and to, to marry the right extraordinary husband. And I think they have a very happy marriage. Um, I mean, it's They have a very with, sweet marriage, They have a by sweet the way. marriage. They do. You know, they bicker, I, but they love each other. I, you're a, and you do that so beautifully. Thanks. I was so moved by the scene you and your husband do mm -hmm. in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to get a second television. Right, right. And you know it's important for your daughter. Yeah. And there's a give and take and a back and forth. <laughs> right. Right. And in the end, he says, okay, you can get a second right. television. Right. And you're creating a role of a mother who, while being very strong, mm -hmm. there's a very gentle side to her. Mm. Am I right? I think so. And she understands that she wants very ba badly to, to make, particularly in this case, what you just referred to, she wants her husband happy. So she's got a balancing act. She knows what her daughter needs and what she wants for her daughter, and then she knows what her husband needs and what he wants, and the two are not meeting. So how are you going to make both of those wonderful people in her life happy? And she is a good balancer. So well, you do it beautifully. Thank you. Well, and Amy, I was going to say the last thing that, that kind of to refer back to yes. uh, why this character came forth. So Amy and Dan have in their backgrounds in particular probably their parents, they have characters that they're drawing on. I think as I started to do some research on both of their lives, I thought, okay, the best person to study is going to be Amy. And to listen to the way she speaks and to ask her about her own past and her own relationship to her mother and her own um, excitement, because both of her parents, I think, were in the theater business. And um, I kind of felt like if I, if I kind of get as much historical knowledge from her and backstory, I'm going to actually understand Rose better. Mm -hmm. So that's the other person I decide to look at. So I'm watching mm -hmm. episode one, mm -hmm. and then I'm watching two mm -hmm. and three and four. Mm -hmm. If I'm wrong, you tell me. Mm -hmm. I felt as if mm -hmm. all the characters, including you, mm -hmm. understood who this was mm -hmm. and that there was a an evolution of playing it. Subtle, mm -hmm. but an evolution. Mm -hmm. I, for all I know, you did them all on the same night. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm asking the question. Yeah, I'm too. saying to you that the rose I see in episode four mm -hmm. 
is a little different than the mm. episode one, mm -hmm. and I found it wonderful. Thanks. But if I'm wrong, yeah. you tell me. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think you understand this about the process then, and in your own experience as an actor, and then also in your experience talking to actors, they don't let us know a whole lot. Um, I don't know how much Amy and Dan had pieced the whole uh, first season together. I think they had to be in a writer's room, so they were working on it a bit as we were going along. And part of, I think, what was being discovered to me was, oh, I just figured out because someone said something about my character, about her past, that I can layer into her that I didn't really know. So, and that was true on the other series I did for three years was called Once and Again, and that was again true later on with Two and a Half Men even, but to a lesser extent, because that was a sitcom and they, their rules are a little bit different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I found always in a show that was, had a little bit of length of time to work on a character, that every new week I got in a script, mm -hmm. I got to have a new flavor, and I got to find a little bit more idiosyncrat, you know, mm -hmm. syncratic behavior, and I agree with you that okay. I think, as, as I learned more about her, then I hope I grew, you know, well, uh, I hope that's true. And, you know, also as Rachel's character butts, butts up against mine, there's, there's tension and friction that you start seeing with mother and daughter that earlier on, I think, if you were to have done this story, this series, a year before this episode of The Pilot Begins, who the mother and daughter were at that point are very different than what happens in the in the pilot. Very you know interesting. What I mean? Yes, you, I do. You know exactly what I'm saying without yes, saying I too do. much. Yes. So I kind of unravel a bit or have to hold it together more as my daughter is, even though I don't know the secret of why she's unraveling. I know that the marriage has fallen apart. I don't know she's doing stand-up comedy. Yes. You know, I don't know she's spending her nightclub nights learning new things about herself. Yes. But certainly she's not the girl that I thought she was, okay. or she's not the girl that I've raised, or she's not the girl that I want her to be. So I discover more when I'm in conflict. Okay. I want to give you one more compliment. Yes. Well, thanks. I'll take them all. <laughs> Please. A series that, that like the one that Amy and Daniel have created, mm -hmm. it can be cartoon. Mm -hmm. And it's not cartoon. Good. And cartoon in this case would be, it's a cliche about who Jewish people are. Mm. You know, it's supposed to be West Side again. Yeah. It, there are things about the characters that don't feel West Side, but mm -hmm. it does feel like these are on the wealthy side, yeah. Jews mm. who have a life that they're trying to live with their daughter mm -hmm. in the same building is how it starts. Mm -hmm. And what I have seen as the show continues mm -hmm. is that the mother is not cliche and, oh, you're, and that's you. a credit to you. Thank you. And the dynamic between you and Tony Shalhoub is, is real thank and you. it's it's very tricky. Mm -hmm. So I want you to hear you're doing a fabulous Thanks. job. Thank I've you. only seen four. Yeah. Do you know by the way where the whole season goes? I'm not going to ask I you what do. it is, but no, do you? I do, and okay. I know what a, a wonderful thing that happens in my character is that you really have an arc so that by the last two episodes of the first season, what I've been experiencing is a totally new thing to what I had started okay. out with, which As is exciting. As an actor, isn't yeah. that fun? Oh, it's wonderful. Uh, I'm not, it is yeah, wonderful. People don't there's, understand. There's, I'm going to only throw out that there's a scene in a temple that I get to do. <laughs> there's a scene in a temple that may not make all of my relatives on my husband's side proud, but it will be a scene in a temple to be spoken of. How about that? Is It'll that okay be to iconic, say? I'm sure. I don't know if we can go that far, but I, I know that I had a delightful day in a temple. Well, good so for you. That was great. You are married to somebody who's Jewish. Yes, I am. Who is that? His name is Randall Summer. And what does Randall do? And Randall's an attorney, but attorney. he was a theater director, and his family ah. is deeply appreciative of both the life and the mind and the life of artistry and the life of, um, you know, family. And one of the things I have to say about this family is that they're a family with a lot of uh, joy. And I, I, I have to say that Amy and Dan have that as a couple. I don't know if you've met with them yet, but I've they, never met them. you're going to love meeting them because they finish each other's sentences. <laughs> they completely are a comedy team. They are so respectful of what, if one of them's written and the other's directing, they kind of run to the others to ask, is that working? And they really kind of need each other and, and respect each other. And then you've got somebody in your lead character here. You've got this beautiful actress, Ray, Rachel Brosnahan, who's, who's also happily married. 
and there's joy that she's bringing to this role and it's not starting out as a troubled character she st starts out as a joyful woman she's a very confident girl and I think that the characters that I get to play, you know, this woman I'm playing and Tony's character are filled with love for one another. So that one of the reasons that we got to stay away from stereotypes too is because Amy takes this kind of idea of a loving family and then throws in mm -hmm. conflict and then throws in, you know, crazy circumstances. One more question about sure. your parents. Yeah. Given what I understand them to be, mm -hmm. And again, they were serious and committed to many things in life. Mm -hmm. And at one point, you were going to be a ballerina, and then I think mm -hmm. you hurt your ankle. Yeah, I, I had a terrible injury. Yeah. And then at one point, you come into you you studied Tisch. I went to Brown for undergrad and and NYU for grad. I certainly was at Tisch. Yeah, okay. I loved it. How did your parents feel about the fact that's a great that their question. daughter wanted to be <laughs> a, a professional actor? Right, that's a great question because it's like if my mom, who's sort of waiting, uh, looming around, could come in, you could get to an answer. She would be a delightful I'd love person. To meet her. She's an amazing, I'd amazing love to meet woman. Her. Um, they were frightened because the structures that were in place when I was growing up w were based in in love of family and also. Uh, love of education and I think if I had chosen to sort of say at age 18 I'm just going to go to Los Angeles or just go to New York and try and be an actor they would uh, I don't even think they could have quite accepted it but because I was a, a person who had studied hard in both an undergraduate and graduate program the idea that I could always be a teacher the joke is every time I came home my dad would say have you thought of teaching <laughs> even if I was on Broadway he was still saying have you thought of teaching if I was in a hit show like I was lucky enough to be on a show for 12 years he still said when I came home for the holidays have you thought of teaching <laughs> because I think for them education is so valued and and that was just a you know a difficult uh, thing to for them to, 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 to grapple with was how was I going to be in such a, a delicate world as, mm. as being an actor you are wonderful thank you it's and you're a very pleasure. special person thank you. it's thank a joy you. been thank meeting you, you. I wish you, you all success with the thank series you. Thank and you. maybe one time we'll see each other again I but hope so you're you, such Mary. a lovely lovely interview thank you, thank thank you guys you. so much Alex Borstein you're playing Susie a bohemian crusty sort of personality a bit lost manager of a comedy club always wanted to be manager of a comic and you find what you believe is a treasure when Midge Mizell stumbles onto the comedy club stage seems to be a natural stand-up comic you encourage her to go into the business you become her manager and then you become her friend you are an accomplished actress you're a writer you've done stand-up yourself and now you're playing Susie on The Marvelous Mrs. Mizell. So you heard the way I described your character. Mm -hmm. How would you describe it? Where do you think I'm, I'm a little off? I don't think she's lost. You used the word lost. I don't, you don't think, think she's so? lost. No, I think she's exactly where she wants to be. Interesting. I think she wants to be in the underbelly, counterculture, literally underground, and happy to be there. Um, and I don't know, I don't know that she necessarily knows she wants to be a manager of comedians. I think she <clears throat> has come to find out she's good at spotting talent mm -hmm. and she wants to be a, like a, a curator of art, I think, mm -hmm. and she sees Midge as a piece of art. Interesting. There's a scene where she, you, go into a, you crash a uh, Friars Club, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And you meet with a person who is described as the premier manager of comics. And you ask him for help and advice and guidance. And he tells you to come and meet him again. And so far the episode where you do if you do is not yet out for me to see. But it seemed to me like your character, that Susie, was in fact feeling that she needed somebody to tell her what the heck to do now that she'd found what she believes is this gem. Is that about right? Yeah, I think she you know, always knew she wanted to play a role <clears throat> in this business and be able to spot talent. 
And then when she sees Midge, it kind of all becomes clear. Like, this, I think, is my destiny. This yes. is what I'm meant to do. This is a person. The rest of the world has to know this person's talent, and I'm going to deliver it. Because no one else is going to take a shot on a female stand-up, so i got to do it. But then realizing, holy crap, I have no idea how to do this. Yes. What do Amy and Dan tell you about your character? And how much freedom did they give you to try to craft anything you wanted to craft inside the character they wrote? You know, Amy says she wrote it with me in mind, which very is why. Very fla flattering. Very. That's why she's such a foul-mouthed little girl. Um, <clears throat> you know, I knew Amy knows what she wants from beginning to end. So she's got in her head, I'm sure, exactly the whole journey for Susie. Um, all I wanted to add when I met with them was, you know, I really want to convey in some way that Susie is in love with Midge. Not necessarily, is she a lesbian? Is it, it's, it's not that it's a physical. I understand. But this is just a true, wonderful romance. Yes. Of the ages between these two people. And you don't get to see that a lot, two women that complete each other and help each other and want to succeed for each other. And um, so that was my, that was my two cents. That's that she's beautiful. really in love with her and, and fascinated by this creature. Yes. And, and Amy was like, I completely agree. I just saw the scene where Midge wants you to be her friend. And Susie is, it seems to resist. And it's over a French fries. Mm -hmm. And in the end, Susie begins to, it, was it a hard was scene? a very difficult Tell scene. Tell me. Tell me. It was just very hard to get the tone right, to get the tone right of, of exactly that. How much do I let her in? How much, how friendly can I be? How much my guard do I let down? And when I do, how should I deliver it? You know, uh, yeah, those are tough ones. It was exquisite. Oh, good. It was a very moving, sweet scene. Well, I got to eat a lot of fries, too. That's, those are my favorite scenes. Uh-huh. Um, both of your parents were mental health professionals. They were mental. I thought you were going to end it there. <laughs> they still are. Yeah. Uh -huh. you, you were brought up where? Uh, you know, Rachel and I are both from Highland Park, yes, Illinois. Yes, isn't that amazing? And then Deerfield, and then Los Angeles. So a little, lots of places I was uh -huh. from. So their daughter decides she wants to be an actor. How do they feel about that? You know, when you're Jewish, you start performing at the Passover <laughs> Seder. That was, those were my first performances. And Four questions? Yes, and I think they knew at an early age that I, I had a knack for something. I saw that the power of getting a laugh. I was the comic relief in the family. But we never thought I could really do that for a living. My mother was hugely supportive. You're the best. You're the best at everything. You're incredible. You're amazing. You know, my father was always like, yes, but what are you going to do for money? Yes, but what are you going to do for a living? Um, so that kind of... You, know, you had to go to college and you had to major in something else and, and have did. something else. And, and, but yeah, I don't think they ever, none of us really thought I could do this for a living. Mm -hmm. It's a miracle. It's the miracle of Hanukkah. <laughs> <clears throat> I've burned now for eight decades. Were they scared for you? Yeah, I think. My dad's still nervous. You know, he's always nervous about any money I spend and what if it doesn't last? What's going to happen? What are you going to do? Although you've been very successful. Knock on wood. I've been time. very lucky. I've been very lucky. There's a degree of luck, but you're very talented. Wow. But wait, they gave you the hat? Which hat? The hat you wear. Susie's hat? Yeah. The, the, the literal hat. I what thought I, it was figurative. I'm like, what, I mean, what I mean is... Yes, my father handed me the hat. No. I want to know whether when... When, they, when you entered the costume, they said, and you're wearing this hat. No, I, I wanted a hat. I was very adamant. A couple of the pictures that I found that I sent to Amy before kind of deciding what, what she should look like, a couple of them had hats. Shorter hair and hats. And I wanted suspenders. And I wanted very comfortable, flat kind of a work shoe and kind of dungarees of some sort. So I, was, I very specifically knew that. I wanted that. But Donna, the, the, our costume genius, they found those sweaters that I wear, which to me has the perfect touch. It, it, it looks like I'm, it looks like they 
outfitted me from like the 1958 husky boys section of a Sears catalog. Mm -hmm. Those little stripes and there's something very childlike, boyish that I really like. Alex, if you had a choice between being <clears throat> in a sitcom or a series, and this really isn't a sitcom, but as a series, or doing stand-up, which would you rather do? Series. Really? Absolutely. Okay. And would you rather act or write? Um, the writing is so hard. It's so much harder. It's the hardest thing in the world. But it, ultimately, it might be more satisfying. And I think it, it's probably what I'll, end, I'll do more. I think that's where the longevity is, mm -hmm. you know, on camera work. We'll Talk see. to me for one moment about growing up Jewish. What kind of Jewish home did you have? Very clean, very clean <laughs> Jewish home. My mother was obsessed with cleanliness. We had a room you weren't allowed to sit in. Is this true? Oh, of course. Um, the nice room. Um, my father was Orthodox. My father was raised Orthodox. And my mother was, is a Holocaust survivor from Budapest. So she has a very deep sense of being Jewish. And he had a very deep set of traditions and rules. So in that way, they were very compatible. But otherwise, it's kind of a crazy match. Um, we were not raised Orthodox. It was pretty conservative. You have had two mitzvah? sets of dishes. You, kosher home. Kosher home. Um, I had a bat mitzvah, yes. How I went to that? a private Jewish day school and learned Hebrew. Which and, one? Uh, in Chicago, it was called Solomon Schechter Day sure, School. Sure, sure. And then when we moved to Los Angeles, it was Abraham Joshua Heschel Day yes. School. So you were just a plain Jewish kid? A very plain Jewish kid. But you were funny already, right? A Marshalls, Lowman's <laughs> shopping, <laughs> chunky little Jewish kid. Your bat mitzvah ceremony, do you remember it with fondness? I do. Yeah, my dad taught me my Torah portion, um, which was fun. And we had the party in my backyard. Lovely. Was service at Temple and then the party in the backyard. And it was pretty fun. At that point, I had switched to a public school. I got very tired of the private school. And I begged them to send me to public school. Why do you think that was? I just, I just needed some culture and some yes. color and some flavor it just diversity felt, too diversity it felt very yes and right we all know the shema what else <laughs> is there so i i loved that my, my bat mitzvah the people that were invited ran the gamut you know it was kids that had never seen or heard of a jew before and it was really fun to kind of introduce that world to people mm -hmm. and what about now as an adult where are you in the and where's your jewishness in you now I'd say it's about an eight. Very impressive. Well, you don't know what the high number is, but <laughs> um, I have two kids. I have a son and a daughter. Oh, muscle And, well. you know, they, they do the, well, I'm having them do Hebrew school and not private full-time day school. Where do school. you live? I live in Barcelona. In Barcelona? Your kids are going to Hebrew school in Barcelona? No, actually right now they're not going to Hebrew school because we're there. But um, before that it was in Pasadena, California. But yeah, we, we, we belong in Barcelona to a, a Jewish organization there. And Lovely. Getting our little, getting our Jew fix. One of, you know, 6,000 Jews in a city of 2 million. So it's a small, small community, but okay, a strong one. I, I still don't eat pork. That's my daily reminder of being Jewish. Um, I don't go to temple every week, but I do the high holidays. And I'm, I love the traditions. I do Shabbat every Friday night. Um, have a challah. That's lovely. Found the one place in, in Gracia where I live that has a challah. That's lovely. Sweetheart. Yeah, it's nice. That's lovely. You know, very many, uh, often when one talks to actors, there is a universalism to the acting profession. And you are playing different characters and you're all over. And very often, an actor who is running here, there, and everywhere, somehow the Jewishness falls away. It's interesting to me that for all you've done and all your creativity, you've been able to maintain a real sense of Jewish identity, not only for yourself, but for your children. Yeah, well, you know, I've kept all the good parts, all the, my favorite parts I want them to have. And Shabbat was one of those. That, that Friday night to have family and unwind, and let's face it, the challah. It's all about the challah. Um, but yeah, that was kind of important to me to have that 
when life gets nuts and you're doing this and everyone has different events and, and after school activities, you always have that Friday night to come together and I like that. One last thing. Your mother's a Holocaust survivor. Often survivors, it affects them their entire life. Did, do you think your mother had, has a hard time even after she survived and did it affect you? She, you know, she was a child, a, a child during it, and she wrote her, her thesis. When she went back to school at a later age to, to go into the mental health field, and her thesis was about the, the mental effects of being a child Holocaust survivor. Mm -hmm. So she's really delved into that and looked at that. There's a lot of similarities they have, a lot of personality traits that a lot of these child survivors mm -hmm. have. And yeah, you, that's part of probably another reason why Judaism is very important to me to keep to keep going, knowing that the flame was almost extinguished, not by our choice. So it feels like a, very important to me to to keep the candle burning and pass it along, and have all of my family that was wiped out have it not have been for nothing. You know, if you're not going to hold on to that, what was the point? So, so yeah, I think it has absolutely affected our lives, but it's also made her. And my grandmother was too, two of the funniest <laughs> women I've ever met and survivors and strong. And that's also your heritage. And interesting, absolutely. Yes. I was so looking forward to meeting you and it was better than I thought really? it would be. Really? Even better. Wow. Oh, do you remember the uh, <clears throat> four questions? Yes. Do the first line. Ma nishtana ha laila haze mi kol I could go on and on. You are fa I wish you all the best. <clears throat> Only success and joy for you. Maybe there'll be other times we get to sit together. The program is fabulous. <laughs> You're fabulous. Best of luck with the marvelous Mrs. Meisel. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you, Alex. First of all, Rachel, I think you are out of this world. Thank I you. love the work you've done. I thought you were terrific in House of Cards. I adored you in Manhattan, and that's the first time I really understood who you were. Yeah. And I have seen the first four episodes mm -hmm. of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and you are absolutely fabulous. Thank you. You're not Jewish. No. Okay. And you played in Manhattan, mm. Abby Isaacs, yeah. Jewish girl. Yep. And you're playing Midge Maisel. Mm -hmm. uh, is it hard for you? In other words, I understand you know, people who watch TV, yeah. very often we think that the character is the person. Sure. And I have not worked in television at all. I've done a lot on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And I understand you're an actor. This is your profession. Yes. And you are lucky enough to get a role, and every actor wants as many roles as he or she can get. Yes. You get a role, and your job then is to create a character that is believable, yes. whether you're on stage, on film, or on television. Yes. And so what you're trying to do now is create an honest mm -hmm. character playing Miriam Midge. Yeah. You're not Jewish. I want to know what went into your creating the role that you're now leading in. Yeah. Um, so for me, this world, this family, I, actually, when I read this script, one of the things I loved about it is that it felt familiar to me. So I grew up on the North Shore of Chicago in Highland Park, Illinois, which is a predominantly Jewish community. Yes. Um, and I grew up immersed in Jewish culture. I come from a very non-religious household, and so Judaism and a lot of the traditions are really the only thing that I've ever known in the way of religion. Mm -hmm. I, all of my friends were Jewish. When I slept over at people's houses, I'd go to temple with them in the morning. They welcomed me into seders and Shabbat dinners. I've been to hundreds of bar, bar bat, and b'nai mitzvahs. You know, so for me, um, it's really the only community I've ever known. Um, and, and that rings true here in New York as well. Yes. Most of my friends still are Jewish. Uh, so, so I think, thankfully, there wasn't a ton of new research that was involved. A lot of the inside humor was actually stuff that I already understood. You know, for example, there's a prolonged joke about um, a giant mezuzah, and, and I already knew what that meant. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it, it, 
it, yeah, felt familiar. By the way, you give me chills the way you tell it, and I understand a hundred percent. I think there's a challenge to this series. Mm. Again, I watched all four episodes, the first four episodes as right. we meet, and I was very impressed in all my ways, Thank and you. I was thrilled that I was going to get a chance to meet you <laughs> and some of the other cast members. Yeah. The challenge here is not to do something that is stereotypically cliche. Absolutely. And you're playing um, an Upper West Side woman, mm -hmm. young woman, married, two children. You have what seems to be a light, uh, lovely husband, mm -hmm. uh, Joel. Yes. And lo and behold, it, the marriage has problems and begins to fall apart. Mm -hmm. And then your character goes in search of her own self yes. and finds something fascinating and fabulous, or to use the word, marvelous. <laughs> okay. You dared. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then the, the, the problem is not to make it seem like a cliché, mm -hmm stereotypical Jewish family on the Upper West Side, yeah. but real people. Mm -hmm. And first of all, just talk to me about that. Do yeah. you want to say what I'm... Yes, I do. Okay. Um, yes, and I think, I think so much of that, thankfully, is on the page. Uh, this is a world and a family dynamic that is very familiar to Amy. Yes. And so she's writing what she knows, and, um, and that's, I think, what helps it feel authentic and not cross into that caricature territory mm -hmm. that can be so detrimental mm -hmm. to a community that is largely not represented on camera, on screen this way. Um, I, I appreciate so much that this show, because it is from Amy's experience, is so unabashedly and unapologetically Jewish. It's a huge mm -hmm. part of who they are, mm -hmm. and more culturally than, than specifically religiously. Exactly. Very They're good. not the most observant <laughs> Jews. <laughs> most Jews are not that yeah. observant, but they have a strong sense of Jewish identity. Exactly. Yes. You grew up in Highland Park. Mm -hmm. Your parents, what were they like? <laughs> uh, my, so my mother, we have, I'm one of three, um, and my mother worked while she had me. She worked in an apartment uh, complex running a luxury apartment um, uh, building, or series of buildings. and. Uh, after the second, she stayed home with us, um, and my dad uh, was the vice president of the international department of a children's book publishing company. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're um, my mom's half British, so I'm, or she's British, so I'm half British. She's full, fully British, very <laughs> British. Uh, and, um, yeah, but there was a, a big, a uh, lot of pressure on academics, um, mm -hmm. but my family's also very athletic. Uh, we grew up playing sports. Mm -hmm. I snowboarded and wrestled. Oh. And when did you decide you wanted to make acting a career? I think in high school. I think I would have decided it sooner if I knew you could. Um, it wasn't something I thought of as a career. It wasn't a doctor or a lawyer or a psychologist or, you know. Um, and then when everybody was deciding what they wanted to study in college, I realized that the only thing I'd ever been interested in was drama. Interesting. Uh, and so, so I, had, I had to do it. Okay. And how did your parents react? And I've asked this to many individuals yeah. be because very often parents who have a traditional lifestyle, mm. and that's what you grew up with. Yes. On. And that's what I wanted to make sure you, to establish. Yes. Very often when a, you know, many kids in high school mm. dream of being on the stage. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, the dream morphs. Yes. And they become psychologists. Mm -hmm. And they become doctors. And they become lawyers, whatever. And then there are those like yourself who, A, pursue acting, mm -hmm. pursue the field of, of theater, and then are successful. Mm -hmm. And at one point, you had to tell your mother and father, <laughs> this is what you wanted to do. Yeah. I want to know their reaction. They were horrified. They, <laughs> you know, they, they, they just didn't want me to suffer. Yes. You know, like good parents do. Yes. They, they didn't want me to pursue an impossible dream. Um, and and I was good at other things. You know, I was really academic. Uh, I enjoyed writing and um, and and the sciences. You know, and uh, and I think they just were like, please do something else. Um, but. I'm really grateful to them, actually, because they weren't quick to jump on board. Mm -hmm. They kind of told me to prove it, mm -hmm. um, and that if I wanted to do it, then I was going to have to work really hard at it. And so I saved up babysitting money to take my first acting classes in the city, in Chicago, 
um, to pay for my first set of headshots. And, and, uh, and I'm, I'm grateful that they pushed me in that way. You were very wise parents. Yes. Very good for you. Yeah. Um, you know, I have seen the range you've done. Uh. I mentioned three roles, House of Cards, Manhattan, and now you have the lead in the water for Mrs. Maiso. Maiso. I'll never get it right. <laughs> um, Took us a long time. Yeah. I want to know, at what point do you realize you're going to have the lead in an Amazon series that may do very well, and you have writers and, I mean, Amy and Dan have done fabulous work, yeah. and it's not just the Gilmore Girls. Yeah. And now you are the lead. So what's that? What, tell me about how that <laughs> happens for you. Uh, can I say right now? Now is when I'm realizing this. No, I mean, in a, it, I don't think that really what that means has dawned on me yet. I'm not I sure that fully arrives time. until it's out there. Yes. Um, but there was a welcome level of added pressure to carrying a show, mm -hmm. literally in this show, in the sense that there's, it's a, she talks a lot, she talks a lot. Uh, and so the amount of material that I was learning, I've never been a part of a job where I am there all day, every day. And mm -hmm. I loved that about it, just mm -hmm. being able to disappear into this project for five months. Um, I still have to return a lot of unanswered emails. But uh, yeah, I think I think I, I haven't fully grasped that Well, you yet. should be very proud. <laughs> Thank you. I've seen a range in your work now. If you look at the three things that people may know you from. Mm -hmm. They're different. That's a credit to you. Thank you. And I want to know whether what I'm saying to you rings true to you. Mm -hmm. You're not playing you mm -hmm. on that stage or on screen. You're playing a character yes. that you've been contracted to do. Yes. Am I, do I have it right? Yes. Okay. What about this character? is interesting to you mm. and challenging to you. Yeah, um, that's right. That's something that I am attracted to as an actor in general, yes. things that, I, that are far from me, things that I don't understand. That's exciting and scary to me at the same time. And so this was no different. Um, this is maybe the furthest outside of anything I've ever played, and it's been horrifying <laughs> in every single minute and exhilarating in that same, by that, by that same token. Um, I think the thing that attracted me to this character the most is that I realized at some point while I was reading this script that I have almost never, maybe never, read a character that is so unapologetically and genuinely confident. Um, I've certainly never played one. Yes, by the way, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I meant to say to you, yeah. you know, the character you played in Manhattan yes. evolves. Yes. And in the end, makes some very powerful decisions of yes, her own. Yes. In the very cu first couple of episodes of yes. Manhattan, your character makes very powerful choices. Mm. And I don't want to give everything away, but you'll know what I mean. Yeah. The scene in front of the apartment with Joel yes. is fabulous. Thank you. And it's way ahead of its time. Yes. And in some way, even now, Rachel, yeah. it's ahead of its time. Yes. And again, people shouldn't think, oh, you know, that is Rachel. Mm. At the same time, I'm wondering, I wondered, given what I've seen, mm. whether there's anything fulfilling about you as a person mm. to play that kind of woman in a drama or in a comedy series. Yeah, well, I think I, um, something that I, share I think with these women that has been an access point for me is that I think we're all resilient um, and I like to see resilient women on screen because I know so many extraordinary and resilient women mm -hmm. and there are shamefully few represented mm -hmm. still in film and television mm -hmm. uh, so yes moments like that although what feels different about that moment that you're talking about is that it is um, bold and unexpected from her at that time but she I don't think I would argue in that moment that she doesn't even know yet that that's different mm -hmm. she doesn't know yet mm -hmm. um, she hasn't yet gotten that far in her processing of what it means to be a woman in this world and what's expected of her and how she feels about it yes. she's just following her heart oh you play that brilliantly thank you we understand that this is a human being yes. learning as she goes yes and that, that's wonderful. Um, well, again, it is, 
you do everything Thank in you. a marvelous, marvelous way. I wish you all the best. Thank you very Again, much. Again, I wanted to meet you. I'm in love with you. Thank I you. think what you do is fabulous. Thank you. I wish you all the best, and sometime maybe we'll get a chance to meet again. I would love Thank that. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. This was such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS, the Jewish Broadcasting Service, with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double chai, or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the JBS homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM, to GEM, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.